Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and I create knitting content here on YouTube. This is video three in the four part series of how I knit my socks. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing the heel flap, heel turn, and then the decreases that follow. The full written version of this pattern is included in the description box below. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe down below and also give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Here are my socks after I finished that three by one ribbing. And I've knit about, it's in between two and a half and three inches right here. Cause that's the distance I like before I create the heel flap. Cause essentially up the leg of the sock, you're gonna have the top ribbing, kind of like the main body of the sock leg. And then you'll have the heel flap, which will add, for me, it'll add another 32 rows. So that's quite a bit of length once I add them all together. To create the heel flap, the first thing you wanna know is how many rows we need to knit this heel flap for. So the main thing I go by is I just take the number of stitches I cast on and divide it by two. So I have 64 stitches on my socks. So I'm gonna knit 32 rows of heel flap on each sock. Now to knit the heel flap, you wanna make sure you're back at your beginning of the round. So for me, because of the cast on method I used, I know that my beginning of the round is when my, basically like my little tails of yarn are over towards the right. So I know that this would be basically like me starting a new round when I start knitting across. So this is gonna be the side that I add my heel flap to. Now to knit the heel flap, we're actually just gonna work, first we're gonna work across the front of these sides and then we're gonna turn our work, but instead of going across these back stitches, we're gonna go across the back, kind of like the inside of the socks. So let me show you how I do this. The actual patterning for the heel flap is gonna alternate between two things. So first, when we go across this front side, we're gonna alternate between slipping a stitch purl-wise and knitting a stitch, and then we're gonna purl across the entire backs. So I'm gonna start off slipping a stitch purl-wise with the yarn in back, then I'm gonna knit the next stitch. Again, slip a stitch purlwise with the yarn in back, knit the next stitch, and continue doing these two all the way across the front side of each of these socks. There's the first sock, I'm gonna slide it to the side, and then do that same slip a stitch, knit a stitch on the second sock. Now I wanna turn my work, but I don't actually wanna push this needle back in again because I wanna use this needle to now work across the inside of both of these socks. So I'm just turning my work, but I'm ignoring this whole back needle right now it's in the front location, but I'm ignoring the side I haven't worked across yet. And I'm just gonna work back and forth across the one side of the sock. So now on this back side, I'm gonna slip the first stitch, because on both of these rows, you always wanna slip the first stitch. And now I'm just gonna purl across the rest of the row. So now I've finished going across the inside of the sock. I'm gonna turn my work again. And once again, you don't have to push this needle back in again. So that's the nice thing about working just one side of the sock. But what I've completed so far is two rows of my heel flap. So again, I wanna continue repeating those two rows for a total of 32 rows. So I'll catch back up with you once I finish those. Here are my heel flaps. And again, I did 32 rows. So now the next step is gonna to be to turn our heel. So basically we're gonna to wanna to try and reorient our knitting so that we can begin, basically like the leg goes this way and then you need the foot to come out the other way. So we need to start turning these stitches. So we're gonna do that using some short rows. And the trick here is that we're gonna do all the short rows on the first sock, finish this one. Then we're gonna do all the short rows on the second sock. So we're doing one sock at a time for this step. So I'm gonna show you the first two rows, and then after that, I'm gonna show you how I read my knitting to continue along. 
So for this first row, I'm going to slip my first stitch purlwise. I'm going to knit 17. Now I'm going to do a slip slip knit. Lastly, I'm going to knit one. Now I haven't gone all the way across the row, but I'm going to turn my work. And now I'm going to slip that first stitch purlwise. Now I'm going to purl five. Work a purl two together. And then purl one more stitch. Now again, I haven't gone all the way across, but I'm gonna turn my work. And you can see, basically I just worked those inner stitches. And so how I like to continue is I'd like to just stretch out my work a little bit and you can see that I have a gap in between this stitch and this next stitch that's in the peach color so between the blue stitch and the peach one. So on this next row going across these are the two that I want to do a slip slip knit on then I'm going to knit the next one and then turn. So basically you want to keep doing your slip slip knit on the other side I'll show you where the purl gap is for your purl two together but that's the easiest way is to just read your knitting so that you continue going across that way. Or if you prefer, in the written version of the pattern that's down below, you can find each of the stitch counts that you need to go across back and forth written out. But now again, I'm going to slip that first stitch purlwise, knit until one stitch before that gap. There's my gap, so I'm going to do a slip slip knit. Knit one. Now I'm going to turn my work. And on this side again, if I stretch out my work, there's a gap in between this stitch and the next stitch. So those are going to be the two I purl together. So I'm going to slip my first stitch work across until one before that gap. Pull the two together. Purl one. Now turn my work. Another thing to note here is that if you ever want to check your work, you can just count how many stitches after you finish your purl side. So you want to make sure you're back at the beginning. How many stitches on either side? So right now, these are all the stitches that I'm working. And then over here on the other side of the gap, I have nine stitches. And then over here on the other side of the gap, I have nine stitches. So that means I'm still on track and basically like my heel is in the center. I'm now at the point where I have one stitch left on either side that hasn't been worked in yet. So I can't repeat that full row because then I would have to slip slip knit these two together and then knit one more. So I'm gonna modify it a little bit. What I'm gonna do here is I'm still gonna slip the first stitch and then knit all the way over across until one stitch before that gap. So basically until two stitches remain. Now I'm going to do a slip slip knit. And now I'm actually just going to slip this sock over to the side and begin working those same steps on the second sock. And the reason I want to do that is so that way once I finish the second sock, I can purl back across the second sock and then work the last purl row across this first sock. And then I'll be back at the beginning again. If I did work the back of this purl row, that'd be totally fine. You would just then want to slip this whole sock back over here again. So then you could begin working on the second sock's heel. Here are my two sock heels that I've made. 
And now I just need to work that last pearl across to finish up. So I'm going to turn my work. Slip my first stitch purlwise, purl across until two stitches remain, and then purl do together. Purl two together. Now I'm going to slide this sock to the side and then work that last purl row on the second sock. Now I'm going to turn my work again. So now I have the little heels facing me. So there is each of my heels, and you can see the work is turned. And what the goal of this next step is gonna be is that I wanna work across each of these stitches, then pick up one side of the heel flap, then I'm gonna work across my second sock stitches, then pick up the, the left side of that heel flap. I'm gonna turn my work, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna work in pattern, pick up the remaining side of the heel flap, work across the other side, and then pick up um, the first sock's heel flap. So I'll just show you how I'm gonna do this. Again, I'm gonna slip that first stitch purlwise, knit all the way across, and now you wanna pick up your heel flap. So the way I pick up my heel flap, let me zoom in, is you can see that there's kind of like these sets of two stitches all the way along here. So like there's a set of two. So you want to pick up each of those because those are each of our slip stitches along that border. So you want to pick up each set of two with your left hand needle and then just knit right into it with your right hand needle. So there's my first one. Then I'm going to go down to my next set of two. Knit right into it. And you're gonna keep going down until you've picked up 16 stitches. And if you're one short or something like that, just pick up basically like either this bar or one of these side two stitches that's already been worked and use that one as your 16th stitch. Cause that'll even close up the gap even further. So it would actually be an added bonus. So I'm gonna continue going down the side and picking up my 16 stitches. Once you're finished, you should have a total of 34 stitches on that first needle. So we have 18 from our original heel flap, and then we picked up another 16. So I'm going to move that to the side, and I'm going to repeat those exact same steps on the second sock. I've now picked up both sides, so I'm going to turn my work. And at this point, the needle's getting a little fuller, so all those extra stitches we have. I'm going to put back in both my needle points, because again, now we're basically working the full magic loop circle. Now here again, we're working the knit one, purl one, and then knit three, purl one pattern across. And I do find it's helpful before I start picking up the other side to place a stitch marker over here in this corner. So basically I'm gonna knit across these 32 stitches, place a stitch marker, and then pick up the next 16 along the other edge. Then I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the second sock. Here are my socks after I've picked up all those stitches. So now the last part is going to be two different rounds. So first there's going to be a decrease round, and then there's going to be a knit round. And I'm going to alternate between these two rounds until I reach the number of stitches I had before. So basically I'm going to want to reach, again, 64 stitches. But the way I want to do these decrease rounds is a little tricky. So you can see I've placed stitch markers. So again, these are the ones I talked about before, which are just in between where the patterning on the front of the sock is and where we picked up the heel flap. And then on the other side, these ones are completely optional, but I basically just took these onto the heel flap so that I remember I need a decrease over here in this corner. Because essentially you can think about it as the second stitch marker of each sock would be over here at the edge of the sock. So for this first side of the sock, which is the side with the heel, I'm gonna work all the way across until two stitches remain and then I'm gonna work a knit two together. Once I complete that, I'm gonna then repeat the same thing on the first side of the second sock. So continue until two stitches remain and then work a decrease. 
Then I'm gonna turn my work. I'm gonna work in the pattern of the front of the sock. Slip my stitch marker, separating the front of the sock from the heel flap. Now over here, I'm gonna work a slip slip knit and then continue working all of my heel flap stitches just as knit stitches. Then again, I'm gonna do that same thing on the second sock where I work in pattern all the way over to my stitch marker. Slip my stitch marker, then I'm gonna work a decrease and then I'm gonna continue knitting across the rest of my heel flap stitches. So the math on these is also a little, a little strange because essentially we have these 18 stitches we started out with at the heel. Then we have 16 stitches over here, 16 stitches over here. And we need to turn this whole combination of 16, 16, and 18 back down into 32. So I'm gonna wanna end up with, and the, all, this, all these numbers are written out in the pattern. I'm gonna wanna continue decreasing until I have 25 stitches on this back needle and then seven stitches in between this stitch marker and the beginning of the, or in the end of that row. So again, 25 stitches over here and seven stitches over here because that'll give me 32 total. And then I already have 32 in the front of the sock. And just to note one other thing too, you're gonna wanna make sure you're alternating between the decrease rounds. So again, where you work all the way across to the end of the front side, decrease, do the same on the second sock, then work all the way back over to the first stitch marker that's on the needle, decrease after the stitch marker, continue knitting across, work in pattern to the next stitch marker, decrease after that one, and then continue working across. So that's one decrease round. Then after each decrease round, you're gonna work one knit round. So you're just gonna knit all the way across the front, all the way across the front of the second sock, work in pattern across the front of the sock. Cause remember, we always wanna keep that side, the knit three purl one, then knit across the heel flap, work in pattern, knit across the heel flap. So those are the two rows we're repeating. And once I finish those, I'm gonna have 64 stitches on my needle. I've now finished all my decreases. So what I wanna do now is I wanna basically rearrange my stitches so I have the same number on each needle. Cause right now I have seven extra on the back needle. So I'm gonna to wanna to move these to the other needle. And the reason for doing this is mainly just because I like to have them balanced. And that way I know I can knit the pattern all the way across the one side and then just knit all on the other side. So it really simplifies it. So to start off, I'm just gonna begin this is my beginning of the round again. So I'm gonna work all the way across the first sock here. So now I've finished going across the first of the sock. So this one's actually really easy to organize. Just pull it over onto the cord. And then you basically wanna take where that stitch marker is and just pull the cord through there. So then it moves to the other side of the sock. And we can just take this stitch marker off when we get back over here. The second sock is a little trickier because basically we have to move these stitches in between the two needles. So I'm gonna work all the way around to this stitch marker and then I'm gonna slide these onto a double pointed needle. So I'll show you once I get over here. Once at the stitch marker, you just wanna take it off and then you can use either just waist yarn and a tapestry needle, or I'm going to use a double pointed needle. I'm going to slide all these on. And then I just want to leave these here. So that way, basically, once I get back over into this corner, I'm going to slide these stitches back onto the needle. So again, I'm just going to work all the way around this sock, and then I'll show you how I slide these back on. Now that I'm back over to the second sock, I'm gonna take these stitches and I wanna slide them onto my left hand needle. So I wanna look at basically, you don't want it twisted or anything. So you just wanna take the stitches that are next to each other and just slide them on purl wise. And we can do this because we haven't worked any of these stitches yet. So now that they're back on that needle, I've now reorganized all of my stitches and I can just begin at the beginning of this sock again and just knit all the way across. So now I'm gonna continue working where I knit on the one side or the bottom side of my sock with the heel. And then I work in pattern the top side until I try on my sock and it's about two inches from the end of my foot. If you're knitting this for someone else and you can't try them on, 
Um, just Google online their, their shoe size and it'll tell you basically the length that it needs to be. So use that as your reference point.